In this video, I will show you how to find the critical values in the hypothesis test. So, what does one need to know in order to be able to find the critical value in the hypothesis test? First, you have to know the type of the distribution involved in the procedure. Then, you need to know the type of the test, such as whether it is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. And finally, you also need to know the significance level, which is a number between zero and one, and usually it is specified in the problem. After watching this video, you will be able to do the following examples. Notice how in every single one of them, you can easily identify the distribution used, the type of the test, and significance level as well. In step one, you'll have to draw the probability density curve of the test statistics uh, distribution. Uh, luckily, there are only a few distributions involved, and we usually label the test statistic using the lowercase of the name of the distribution. So that means if you have a um, test statistic labeled Z0, that means Z distribution is used. If a test statistic is labeled T0, that means the T distribution is used. If your test statistic is labeled chi-squared 0, then the chi-square distribution is used. And finally, if your test statistic is labeled as F0, then F distribution is used. If you have a Z distribution, then you will have to sketch the standard normal probability density curve. That is the one with the mean 0 and standard deviation 1. If you have a T distribution, then using the number of degrees of freedom, you can also sketch the T curve. For chi-squared curve, you also need to know the degrees of freedom. This is a right skewed curve, so as the F curve. Uh, however, to sketch the F curve, you will need to know two degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom in the numerator and the degrees of freedom in the denominator labeled DFN and DFD. In this video, I'm going to use some generic distribution x um, with some generic test statistic lowercase x sub zero and some generic probability density curve. After you sketch the probability density curve, then you will draw the rejection region according to the type of the test. So in a right tail test, you will draw the rejection region in the right tail. In a left tail test, you will draw the rejection region in the left tail of the distribution. And in a two tail test, you will draw the rejection region that is made of two tails. Then you will label the areas and use proper notation to label critical values. So in the right tail test, the area of the right tail is alpha. In the left tail test, the area of a left tail is alpha. In, in, in a two tail test, the area of both tails is alpha. Therefore, each tail has the area half of alpha. Therefore, the remaining area um, under each of these distribution curves will be 1 minus alpha. And using the alpha notation, we can label the critical values in the following way. In the right tail test, the critical value is x sub alpha. In the left tail test, the critical value is x sub 1 minus alpha, because 1 minus alpha is the area to the right. And in a two tail test, the right critical value is labeled as x sub half of alpha, because the area to the right of this value is half of alpha, and the left critical value is labeled as x sub 1 minus half of alpha, because the area to the right of this value is 1 minus half of alpha. And it is important to note here that for symmetric distributions, uh, such as z and t, we can also express the left critical values as the opposite of a corresponding right critical value when necessary. Finally, we get to compute the critical values. Uh, however, it's worth noting that in a right tail procedure, the left critical value doesn't exist. And in a left tail procedure, the right critical value doesn't exist. 
and also the critical values in a two-tailed procedure are exactly the same as the critical values in a corresponding confidence interval procedure. Now, to find the right critical value in a right tail test, we can use the fact that the area to the right of that critical value is alpha, or we can use the fact that the area to the left of that critical value is 1 minus alpha. Similarly, in the left tail test, to find the critical value, we can use the fact that the area to the right of the critical value is 1 minus alpha, and the area to the left of the critical value is alpha. And similarly, in the two-tail test, we can find the left critical value using the fact that the area to the left is half of alpha, or use the fact that the area to the right is 1 minus alpha. And finally, to find the right critical value in a two-tail test, we can use the fact that the area to the right of the critical value is half of alpha, or the fact that the area to the left is 1 minus half of alpha. In summary, to find the critical values in a hypothesis test, we first draw the probability density curve of the test statistics distribution, then we draw the rejection region according to the type of the test, then we label the areas and use proper notation to label critical values, and then we compute the critical values uh, using our understanding and knowledge of the probability density curves and alpha notation. In order for us to find the critical values, we must know the type of the distribution, the type of the test, and the significance level alpha.